Uh, PTI-5, Buck. What's this sensation? Of Roger. Let's just remind our viewers, Dick, that uh, there were a historic series of maneuvers with the pilot actually with his right hands on the, the stick there, on this descent. And we have a wind update for you and a weather update. Uh, you've got a very thin layer at 25,000. The winds airborne are as brief and on the ground 220, 18 knots, gusting to 24. Altimeter is 30, decimal 07. You got 60 miles viz underneath. Over. Hey, good. Sounds like a good old Eddie day. <laughs> Yes, sir. Looks like a few thin clouds there to come around, but uh, they've got all the data that they need. And there's probably no more, no more experienced pilot than Dick. No, I think uh, Mach 1. Joe and Dick had flown the approach and landing phase Mark. test, and now they're doing it again, the same thing. As a test pilot, Joe had about 30 tests to make during re-entry. Going to continuing to fly the test maneuvers. And through that rocket plane, next 15 some That's 16 times. So he's, he's well-versed at this phase of the flight. What is astronauts' wings 15, 16 60, years ago? Yes. Houston, at your convenience, transfer the state vector from the past to the BFS. They're almost unreadable. Roger, a state vector transfer, past to BFS. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. The state vector is nothing more than navigational information. Looks like we've got a few chase planes out there. Fifty thousand feet, Mach one, range twenty-seven miles. It's explained that Joe got his astronaut's wings in the X-15 by going over fifty Mark. miles high. Yes, he did. Nineteen sixty-four. Roger, you're tracking right down the line. So he's on ground track. You're approaching the heading alignment circle now. That's called a, what is it, a 100,000 ton glider? 100,000 feet. 100,000 100 100 ton glider? 22 miles. 200,000 pounds of glider. Let me, Houston, we show you intercepting the hack. And a reminder, you've got the strong winds out of the west. Now out of the... That's the heading alignment 8, circle feet. around the approach end of the runway. You'll see him in a constant okay, left-hand turn. As he comes out of this turn, he'll be lined and up directly with the runway. It's the same runway as the first test right. we landed on. Yes, it is. Runway 23 at Edwards Air Force Base in California. They were going to try a crosswind landing, but the crosswind was just a little too strong for them. They decided to I'll go back into 2-3. turn now to get lined up with the runway. There's moisture in the sky the out there. Picture. He's pulling some... Uh, 25,000 feet. Houston, about 3,000 feet low now, out of 24,000 feet. Roger that. And chase, we're showing 290 at uh, 20,000. 290 knots. Okay, we're about to be with you at 19. Check, body flap to manual. Roger, body flap to manual. We gotta have a chase plane joining up with him pretty quick. 280 knots at 18,000 feet. I'll be down in about two minutes now, Dick. And has Joe Engel got it under his own control now? He might be in automatic landing phase right now. He okay, will, speed brake sweep start now. He will take Roger, over. Still just slightly low on the energy, looking okay. At about 2,000 feet, just before he flares, they're doing a speed brake test now for more aerodynamic data. For a short distance from touchdown, he's still getting test pilot information. Nine miles chase plane looking at his uh, heat shield underneath those famous tiles. Been no reports of any failure there at all. We haven't heard a word of tile problems right, at all. Slightly below glide slope. You're below the glide slope. You have a go for auto land. Okay, Rick. Thank you, sir. This is a microwave terminal phase guidance okay, he's Rick, into right, right now. now. It's an automatic. Now, would it land if he took his hands off? No, it cut take it down to the flare, but Joe has to land it from that point. Just over a minute to touchdown, Roger. Nine thousand two thirty. Coming down in about a twenty degree glide Next, slope. Speed brake auto. Okay. Speed brake, five lap, auto, everything's auto. Thank you. Speed brake to auto helps him control airspeed, about two hundred and sixty-five knots. 
And as we said before, for Joe Engel, this is very nearly routine after all his work in the simulator and on the, the prototype. He flew Enterprise a little bit like this. Now he's just doing it with the second one called Columbia. About a minute away from touchdown. Now, what's the betting that they'll actually put it on the black marks on the run runway where Crippen and Young fail? I imagine there are some bets on this one. <laughs> <laughs> we know a little bit more about the aerodynamics, so he has a better chance. 220. The chase plane, of course, counts them down the last he, few hundred feet. He calls the last uh, 10 feet of altitude and verifies his airspeed. So he's going to know what he's doing. Yeah, he can run into the ground, too. <laughs> 3,500 feet. 250 knots. 2,500 feet, speed breaks are closed. We're at 270 knots. He's right on. Chase concurs. He will start to flare at about 1,700. Yeah. Okay. In good shape. By flare, you mean what? Just rotate. The gear's, gear's coming down. He will rotate the breaker rate of descent. That starts to flare, and if he's already done that, the gear's down. 50, 30, 20, 10, 5, A little dust three, on the runway. Touchdown. Okay. Nose gear 15. He didn't bounce that. He has improved a little bit. 10. 10. As good as a Navy pilot yeah. did? Well, Five, that's hard to say. 3. Touchdown. Welcome home. Look at that. That Thank is you, sight. The whole point about it is that we've now seen it twice. We've seen it before. Time and that time that is truly is a reusable vehicle. Hours, 13 minutes, 10 seconds. Very nice Repeat stuff. that uh, mission elapsed time or touchdown. Two days, six hours, 13 minutes, 10 seconds. Okay, Joe, it's a great day for the Ace Moving Company. Welcome home. Over to Steve Nagel now.